Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series of following King Damon of Mountain River and Vale. And here we have arrived in Hersey on our grand tour of our lands. And here we meet with Lord Orin of Northbreach. So let's hear what he has in store for us as we visit his realm. The streets of Hersey are richly decorated for my arrival, and my vassal, Lord Orin, dutifully awaits me. Ah, uh, how I yearn to delight myself in the great activities and joys that I'm sure he has prepared. Let's start. See what he's got going on here. Off in a remote corner of the festival, I find an elaborately decorated tent. The materials and patterns are alien to me, so different from what I've seen back home. Its owner is stranger still, smiling at me knowingly above clasped hands. Ah, a king! I see much in your future. Come, give me a coin and I'll tell all. Uh, I think that we have no interest in common charlatans. Indeed, you're a faithful follower of the Seven, and charlatans have no sway over us. I'm approached by Lord Orin, holding the Book of Moonman Chivalry. My liege, I'm honored to have you here. Please accept this gift as, gift as a commemoration of this cultural festival, something that would remind you of this day for years to come. I appreciate that he thought of this. However, he looks at me with anticipation. I believe he expects me to give something back? Hmm, exquisite gifts. Uh, exquisite gift. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to obviously take this book. Let's see what it does. The Book of Moonman Chivalry. <laughs> it's not great. But we'll accept it. I'm honored by the gift, however, since I have to give something back, I better think of something appropriate so I don't look like a fool. I could order someone to fetch me the Veilman crown. Uh, no. I also have the Veilman burnished mail just laying around. It would make a great, more personal gift. Uh, let's see. I don't think we're wearing the burnished mail. No, we've got the House Arn mail. We could give him, give him this suit of armor. It's uh, it's decent, but the iron mail is slightly better. We do have to repair that. Uh, we don't have the money for it yet, though. Oh well. Uh, you know what? We're gonna give him the the armor. That should be a a suitable gift for a lord, I would say. Solace in script, the latest work of my Castellan Lord Bastion has become all the rage at court of late. Pangs of sadness, no matter how many days twist and pass, winds whisper coldly through the grass. When one so great falls so far, all lives, all plans are left ajar. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. You can see it's truly heartfelt. Uh, I mean, it probably is heartfelt. Let's, uh, let's face it, he, this guy is quite loyal. We we can't deny we can't deny him that. Let us continue with our cultural festival here and see what else Lord Orin has in store, or is that it? No, apparently not. Acrobats jump in colorful attires. One of them opens his mouth to catch a ball that another one throws, and the public erupts into cheers. The music soon follows. I've heard this song before, perhaps. Most of them sound too familiar. Even from the days, I can hear the peasants loudly singing along and dance in the fields of woof woof woof. A figure decides to join in, stealing the juggling balls. Get that dog. Oh, that's not part of the song. That's a dog actually barking. I can take it back with me. I gain a pet dog. A perfect companion for Jane. Jane Aron. Oh, for our daughter. Yes. I like that. We shall give our daughter a pet dog. You know, they're all our children are coming with us on this as well. What in the world happened to my son John? He is all bruised and beaten, and he refuses to name who did it to him. Was it an older child? Or did he perhaps pester a noble to the point of fury? Now he has all but stopped talking and constantly hides away when there are people nearby. Oh, dear boy. Hmm. Shy. Uh, I don't want him to be shy. But I really don't want him to be paranoid. Ugh. Alright, well. 
obviously we got to choose the the more compassionate option just due to our character traits oh well it happens you know he must have gotten into some sort of altercation along on this tour i sh i can influence his personality still oof not even great chances either um we could try though we could try to get him to be just let's let's do it while we have this festival here there we go the time for the festival is done we can demand tribute um let's see i mean we is tribute expected i think it does i think it is so he gives in very good and we shall continue on hmm we try to get through to john but he just doesn't seem to be understanding the importance of being a just ruler. Ah, uh, here we arrive in the Sisters. My arrival at Lord Paramount Theomar's castle in West Long Sister is marked with fanfare befitting the King of the Realm, and the locals are clearly awed by the grandeur and pomp of my escort. Sharing the rooms of this false bampet is a disgusting necessity. Hopefully it will be over quickly. Theomar outlines the planned tour and assures me the Sisters is so fair and find a land that merely gazing on our towns and fields will be entertainment enough. Uh, we'll see about that. We're here to judge your loyalty, Lord pa Paramount Theomar the Gracious. Let's see. Let's see if you are worthy of the title of Lord Paramount. Uh, and our wife has given birth to a daughter, Princess Cersei. Fine with that. Province of Seas Beacon seems like a truly opulent and excessive place. Uh, I don't know if anywhere in the Sisters is opulent and excessive. It's probably like fishing towns and ruined castles, pretty much. Uh, maybe Long Sister itself has got some some decent castles, like the house, the seat of House Sunderland. But that's probably it. Ever look? I see. Undeclared taxable amenities. Uh, we'll write them off for now. Tax the Lord Paramount. Uh, that doesn't. Apparently, it's not a just thing, anyways. During the tour of the provinces, I am locked in conversation with my vassal Theomar about the seven who are one's divine plan for humanity. When he is interrupted by one of his courtiers. Although the lowly courtier speaks completely out of turn, Theomar of the Sisters strangely did not chastise him and allowed him to speak directly with me. Who is this man? John Hardcastle? Just a petty soldier. Though what he has to say is quite interesting, this breaking of social etiquette, etiquette has caught me quite off guard. I will listen. We gain noble tutoring. One should never speak out of turn. I think, yeah, I mean, we are just diligent uh, one should not speak out of turn, especially when their liege is speaking. That seems pretty reasonable, I would say. Uh, looks like. Ah, Riger Frey has died in the dungeons. The former king of the twins. You know, I guess ah, I've kind of forgot about him in there, honestly. Uh, but we probably should have. We should have had him executed, honestly. For, for his crimes of breaking exile, but... Maybe, maybe by the time we went to go, you know, we were planning on executing him on our way back. Consider this too. We did, we did encounter him and find him here in the gates of the moon. And so we probably sent him up to the Eyrie to be imprisoned in the, oh, what do they call those cells? The ones that are just open to the air on the one side. I imagine that's where we put him. And we were going to wait until we got back to the Eerie to, to execute him. But I imagine perhaps he, maybe he fell out of the cells or he threw himself out and died in the, upon the rocks down below. That's what I imagine happened here. The Omar has been a gracious host so far, showing me his lands and possessions with pride. I mean, his name is The Gracious. So I'm immediately taken aback when he starts stammering and clearly trying to draw my attention away from an apparently unremarkable door we are passing by. Are you hiding something from me, Theomar? I take advantage of his moment of stunned 
Shameful. Guilty. Silenced. Pushed the door open and I'm surprised what I would have find. A whole cellar stacked to the ceiling with expensive wines and liqueurs from faraway lands. I'll pretend I didn't see this. It's only a fair to share with your king. I mean, this seems just... You know, we probably came... This probably implies that he was, you know, hiding stuff in terms of, like, his tax assessment and things like that, you know, what his what his fealty was owed to the king, and he was hiding that from us. So I think that uh, we will demand what is just and righteous here. Wandering the countryside, I happen to, to across what seems to be a gathering of peasants in a small hamlet, accompanied by their proud owners, plump and healthy livestock graze, looking good enough to take a bite out of right as they are. Hmm, rare. The peasants occasionally bring their goods to be judged, analyzing this, their size and health. They seem to be holding some sort of festival, and as soon as I'm noticed, they're eager to show me the fruits of their later labor. We should survey these lands. Uh, get back to your field. How wonderful. I'll judge the contest. Oh, okay. Interesting. We should survey these lands. This feels like the more diligent option. I don't think we're the gregarious type. It'd be nice to get our thing more majestic, but I think we're going to be fine in that regard. So I think the diligent thing to do is to survey these lands. There we go. Increasing the development in Long Sister. I just I want this guy to turn to the faith of the seven. I know that the Lady of the Waves is the traditional faith of the sisters, but our character is zealous. We don't want to have vassals who are not following the faith of the seven, regardless of whether or not this is their traditional religion. During the province tour of Seas Beacon, I am locked in conversation with Theomar uh, uh, about the Seven Who Are One's divine plan for humanity. Oh, this is another another one of... Oh, it's John Hardcastle again. So we can... <laughs> okay, this is actually funny. I'm imagining that we're trying to convince Theomar to give up this Lady of the Waves to embrace the Seven Who Are One and this guy, John Hardcastle, just keeps interrupting us uh, before we can actually, like, get our point across to Lord Theomar. So I think um, that we are going to say this is an unambiguous crime. Yeah, you know what? You interrupt me once and I will be compassionate and forgiving. But you interrupt me twice and that shall not be allowed. So that's a, that is a crime, obviously. Uh, we shall demand tribute from Lord Paramount Theomar. And he gives in. Very good. Theomar and I are leisurely strolling through the trade port of Birchmoor. My vassal points out the many different merchants he has brought to port and the fine wares that are sold here. We are engaged in fruitful conversation about maritime commerce. A child brushes past me and runs into the crowd of shoppers and seamen. At first, I consider it nothing more than a child who has yet to learn their manners. But I soon realize that my pouch of gold is gone. Theomar, do something. No one steals from me. Oh, we're not gonna, like, slay a small child. This child must need it more than I. We are compassionate. We are compassionate. <sighs> All right. Riding upon our blue Tairoshi horse. I receive a welcome worthy of a king at Lord Paramount Mazar. Ah, so we've arrived here in the Twins. Although he doesn't rule from the Twins itself. The Twins is actually ruled by Lady Illyria here. Uh, let's see. He receives me with all requisite deference. I mean, he spent a lot of time being raised up in the Eyrie. So that uh, makes sense. He assures me that this is the only the finest food he has to offer. All right. And we're already at maximum tour success here, so. Let's see. Eat something for the seven who are one's sake. We're going to go with that option for sure. We convinced this man to eat. Alden Nightwick. Oh, what is this? To the perceptive king, Damon of the Mountain River and Vale. I would like your knight, Kendra. Uh, all right. 
Food has been piled high once again this evening, as I have come to expect. However, the little pastries have grown, grown some fond of seem to be absent. I turn to Lord Bearmount Mazart of the Crossing with a quizzical expression on my face. I know you expected more pastry, my king, but Cook assures me that every last one went missing just before it was ready to be served. We tried to catch the thief, but the gluttonous villain is far too elusive. Not too elusive for me. Sad. No, I don't think we're going to, uh, you know, go and track this thief down ourselves. Doesn't seem very kingly. I'm not mad, just disappointed. It would seem Lord Paramount Mazard of the Crossing has decided to put on a performance for my amusement. Uh, I sit at the table. Lord Paramount Mazard appears dressed as my beloved Brindamere. What? I think only of... I think only of King Damon of the Mountain, <laughs> River, and Vale and all the wonderful times we had together. A heartfelt, tragic performance recreating the time my friend Brindamere died of old age. I wonder, should I indulge this? What is... What possessed you to do this? <laughs> this is so... This is ridiculous. Um... <laughs> forgiving, generous, charming. He... Ugh, kids, you know, they come up with the weirdest ideas. How wonderful. Um... This is an insult? Ah, I mean, I think it kind of is an insult, honestly. Ah, that's unfortunate. Because even though this is this is the better option for sure, I think that this does... It seems more like an insult, so yeah. I mean, dressing up as our dead friend and then putting on a performance, like, about the time that he passed away, like... What would possibly possess somebody to to do that? No idea. Um, but in any case, yeah, we are not having it. All right, it's time for tribute. He gave, gives in, of course. There we go. Uh, let's see. This guy wants to join our court. He's actually pretty decent at things. All right. You can come along with us. What is this? As my entourage comes to a halt at the gates of Adderstone, the call is made for Lord Lucian of Fairmarket to receive me. But after a time that is more than generous, not even a lowly servant appears to greet me. The call is made many more times, but we receive no answer, save for the chirps of wild birds and a whistle of gentle winds. It's become clear that I've been turned away at the gates, and the cloistered lord has in so doing insulted the crown. This insult will not soon be forgotten. Break down the bloody gates. Um, I don't know if we will do that. This insult will not soon be forgotten. Indeed, Lord Lucian. Why? I mean, I guess shy, lazy, arbitrary. I guess that's his traits. But wow, you insulted the king. And he will not forget. Dang. We approach a hamlet where a forlorn woman stands shackled on the gallows, a throng gathering at its foot. King, it's the king! A peasant stumbles through the crowd, crying, Please, my wife is innocent. These fiends put their sins at others' feet. They pull him away, wailing, No, serene! The official bows sheepishly. My lord, forgive me. I ignore him. The woman is guilty. Don't worry about it. I'd like to hear the charges. Hmm, I think that we should. We are just. We will dispense justice. We glean some wisdom. All right. The wetlands of cat pools are swarming with tiny, dark, blood-sucking insects. No matter what we do or where we go, there they are, leeching our blood like a torturous cloud sent by the Lord of the Seven Elves himself. Not only are our horses getting flighty and temperamental, but my entourage is as well, especially my courtier, Halden, who is flailing furiously his sanguine-covered arms. Push through. There, mere insect. Salden, strip down. You'll walk in front. No, no, we will push through. Drained by mosquito for three years. Oh, come on. Mosquito bites don't last that long. Uh. My brother, my father, my husband all died in a war. 
A peasant is screaming me at me across the village fair. Where are we right now? Hmm. They must have died in the war where we took the twins. When you commanded and won the Battle of Crown Crescent against Lord Paramount Garbin of the... Oh, no, this was from the Southern Vale War. It was a victory for you, but for me it was the day three generations of my family died. Her anger has turned to tears and the words she spoke next barely reached my ears. You're no king of mine. Ooh, man, the Riverlands is not strongly, you know... They're not strongly for House Arryn here. It doesn't appear to, to be. I can't bring them back. But perhaps some gold will help. This is the compassionate option. We will we will obviously do that. Dang. Alright, well, at least Lord Bastion of House Derry receives us with the pomp of befitting a king. I receive in here it says I receive a welcome worthy of a king at the gates of Lord Bastion's castle in Derry. And there is a little doubt the splendor of my train has made a great impression. There we go, let's see, let us begin. Looks like we're having a feast here as well. Truly this e this me evening's meal has been a delight. I've feasted on all manner of foods, savory and sweet, but nothing has enamored my appetite quite like these fine saffron cakes. Oh, these are too good not to. Uh, you know what, let's, uh, would we indulge? No, I must stop. We should. We shouldn't, you know. Uh, even though we're not necessarily temperate, temperance is an important uh, virtue. Diplomacy perk available. Finally, oh, we're going to take this once we get home because I think that is going to be befitting. It is another evening of my stay in Lord Bastion of Trinit Mouth's home, and yet another foreign meal is placed in front of me. I knock it around a little with my knife, watching as the dark, unfamiliar sauce slides around like cascading mud. Oh, what I wouldn't give for some food from the Vale. Just some simple candied figs would be fine. I could ask Lord Bastion from something back home, of course, but I risk causing offense. I'll just ask. I'm sure the local food is fine. I'm sure it is. We'll accept the local food. Another dinner. Oh, man, how many? I mean, I guess we're having dinner every day, as one does, but still. Uh, let's see, I salivate just looking at this succulent, steamy dish, and right, on, right as I'm about to take my first bite, an irritatingly familiar voice pierces my eardrums. My rival Edwina has arrived to spoil my appetite, and her mere presence is bringing my blood to boil. Lord Bastion of Trident's Mouth has offered to remove this troublesome witch, but I sense he has an ulterior motive. Yes, yes, anything. I have endured worse. Uh, n no, we'll let uh, Lord Bastion handle this. He gains a hook on us. All right. I'm fine with that. Ooh, someone's coming lovers up there. Life as a king brings all a manner of magnificent and fanciful food to my plate. But lately I've grown tired of these same flavors and textures. I desire the truly outrageous, the truly exotic. To one side of me I see saffron cakes and to the other are boiled vegetables. What if I were to take the two distinct flavors and taste them at once. A worthy, worthwhile experiment. All right, whatever, we'll try it. The experiment was a fla failure. We gained a stomach. Five years a stomach ache. Five years. Because we mixed saffron cakes and boiled vegetables? You've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's ridiculous. As I finish my meal, another board is placed. Oh my, how much food are we having here? I'm getting, like, full just reading these events. Uh, my Lee Shirley oh, now I am uh, famed as one of Trident's most fi finest chess players, but I w wish not to play merely for fun. Perhaps we can make things interesting by putting up a waiver wager. Hmm. All right. I shan't ruin my evening. No, no, let's try. Let's play him in a game. Chess, like war, is all a matter of logistics. Let's see, what are our favorite traits here? Diplomacy would be good. Obviously, uh, you know what, our learning is good. I know the rules of chess like the back of my hand. Our match marches on, conti Bastion continuing with such a devious ruse that I'm left speechless. Naturally, my techniques cunningly foil my opponent. We're neck and neck, though neither of us is even close to victory. I might just nip to the privy, whilst it's your move, smiles my opponent. Don't go fiddling with my pieces. I play chess like I fight. 
savagely. Yes, yes, just as planned. Oh, okay. Interesting. In chess, learning is countered by Marshall. He's probably going intrigue. So I'm going to go learning again. I've ent read entire manuals on chess. Yeah, see, he's going for these cunning feats and ploys, but my techniques are foiling him. Uh, mm, you're not much of a strategist, are you? He chortles. Uh, I am un actually unparalleled in the theory of chess. With a smug smile, I place my final piece on the board. This a game of chess is mine. Another fine victory on my indisputable rise towards the role of king of games. That is plus 100 to our elo. And we are doing, we're going to be a chess master here. Chess grandmaster one day, who knows. Nothing but the shallow husk of a man is left of Bastion. He can't believe I won. An excellent match. How does it feel to lose, little man? Oh, no, we're not going to choose that. Um, I'd love to play again sometime. Yeah, all right. I, I think I would. Your opponent agrees that it was a good game. I'll oh, see if we're going to get a friendship here. It's time for tribute, though. I'm sure he will accept the, the tribute here. Yeah, he gives it. Very well. Several peasants gather around me asking for stories from my life. I think back on what I could tell them and the two stories that jumped to mind. One, when I became friends with King Jandon of Strongsong is a lovely memory. On the other hand, when I was victorious in Riger's War of Independence is an awesome tale, likely to inspire loyalty and fervor. Uh, let's see. Lord, hmm, martially inspired? I'll tell the first story. You know what? We are a diplomatic king. And so we should tell a story of our excellent diplomacy. Tempting fruit, falcon climb. While I scan for dangers, a rustling in the bush grabs my attention. Could it be a wild animal? As I brace for impact, Lars jumps out of the bush. Who is Lars? Lars Linden, an old god's follower from the north. You scared me, Lars. Anyways, uh, let me see what you have here. Some kind of fruit? Yes, it looks and smells so delicious. I wonder what it tastes like. Maybe I'll take just a bite. Uh... All right, go for it, Lars. It reinvigorates the body and mind. Oh, good for good for you. Oh, wow, and we've discovered ermine cloaks. So our grand tour has reached its conclusion here. Every county title within Conrad's realm. County control has changed. Oh, yeah, look at this. Control increasing. We gained magnificent liege for 20 years vast limit plus five vassal tax contribution plus 20 percent that's pretty nice development growth in the capital plus 0.3 that's also quite nice our dynasty has gained 150 renown everybody likes us better the bronze commission has gained 25 glory that's one of our knights and look at this all of our lords do seem to to like us quite a bit here and so, yeah, there we go. We have returned home to the Eerie, and I think that that probably makes us an august ruler, wouldn't you say? I think it does. And so, as we can take a look at our character now, 35 diplomacy, which is excellent. What does august give us here? Diplomacy plus two, martial plus one, that's, a little, that's pretty nice, and prestige plus one is a big boost we have a ton of prestige right now like we are getting we're getting a lot a lot of prestige we are very very well respected as a king but i think that it might be time perhaps to to act against our foes in health weatherwax it appears that king garbin has died was mauled alive by a wild beast wow that is unfortunate uh you know he's getting the um robert baratheon treatment over here but his son king gowan is now ruling but house, house weatherwax has earned the enmity of house Arn, and so we should probably look to seize our claims i think we're gonna go for the lordship of nine stars because that's gonna get us an attachment to gulltown and there is the possibility, I think, that we might be able to vassalize Gulltown. So look at this. His realm is distant from yours. Minus 250. 
if we can get closer to his realm, if we can connect to it, I think we could vassalize him. So you know what? We're going to declare war on King Gowan. We're going to siege the, seize the Duchy of Nine Stars. And we are going to then hopefully vassalize Gulltown as well. And that would be hugely advantageous. Getting Gulltown would be great. And not only that, but getting the Duchy of Nine Stars would be a big boost to our power within the Vale as well. But that will take place in the next episode. So until then, Wanderers, thank you for watching.